is the leading killer of men and women in the United States, claiming one million lives each year. Cardiovascular disease includes diseases of the heart, but it also includes stroke and blockages in other arteries in the body. And it's important to know that about half of all the deaths due to cardiovascular disease are due to coronary heart disease. Coronary artery disease develops when cholesterol is deposited and absorbed into the wall of a vessel within the heart. Here, white blood cells trying to consume the cholesterol lose their battle and rupture, forming plaques. The plaques lead to narrowing of the vessel that can cause intermittent chest pain known as angina. But if the plaque ruptures, a clot is formed that can block the vessel and lead to a heart attack. Cholesterol is one of the most established risk factors that we have for heart disease. We have proven beyond any shadow of a doubt that it is a major risk factor for heart disease and that, better yet, by lowering it, you can prevent heart disease. There are two major types of cholesterol. When we talk about total cholesterol, we have LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol. One way to remember that is L is for lousy, we want it lower. And then we have the good cholesterol, which is the HDL cholesterol. H is for healthy, we want it higher. Another consideration in managing cholesterol are triglycerides, which are another form of fat found in the blood. Triglycerides are also important. They are also contained in the plaque buildup that leads to heart disease, and they're very strongly related with the development of heart disease. When doctors measure a person's cholesterol levels, the goal is to have LDL cholesterol levels less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. For HDL cholesterol, the higher the better, greater than 40 milligrams per deciliter for men and 50 milligrams per deciliter for women. Triglyceride levels should be less than 150 milligrams per deciliter. Physicians agree that the closer the patient's levels are to these optimal levels, the less risk they face of a heart attack or stroke. We really don't talk too much about the total cholesterol anymore. It's not really as predictive in terms of future heart disease risk as knowing the specific levels of the good, the bad, and the triglycerides. But how does one manage unhealthy cholesterol levels? The first step is understanding where the cholesterol comes from. Cholesterol comes from two sources. There's the cholesterol that you eat in food, and there's also the cholesterol in your body. So it's very important when we think about methods to lower cholesterol, we have to think about reducing it in the diet. But we also, in some situations, need to reduce the amount that our body makes. There are many dietary steps an individual can take to manage their cholesterol. These include limiting fat from the diet, particularly saturated fats and trans fats, limiting cholesterol-rich foods, and boosting fiber. But results from dietary changes can be mixed. The impact of diet on cholesterol levels varies widely from person to person. Um, some people get discouraged and some doctors get discouraged because when we look at the sort of average reductions that we see, um, in cholesterol levels with dietary therapy, on average, they're often not very impressive. In some studies, we might see 5 or 10% reduction. But don't let that fool you, because in clinical practice, we see some patients have huge reductions. A second way to manage cholesterol is through the use of cholesterol-lowering drugs, the most common of which are statins. The primary drugs to treat cholesterol are the statin drugs, which lower the levels of the LDL or the bad cholesterol. It prevents the body from making cholesterol. And so that is a really effective way to keep your numbers down. There are also what we call cholesterol absorption inhibitors. Cholesterol absorption inhibitors are made up of two classes of drugs bile acid sequestrants, and a newer drug called ezetimib, both primarily lower LDL levels by preventing the absorption of cholesterol in the gut. Now, the statin drugs and some of the other drugs that prevent the absorption of cholesterol are very effective in terms of the LDL or bad cholesterol. But we have to keep in mind that the development of heart disease is related not only to high levels of the bad cholesterol, 
but also related to low levels of the good cholesterol. We have classes of drugs that work primarily on improving the levels of the good cholesterol, HDL, and lowering the levels of triglyceride. And these classes of drugs are called niacin and fibrate therapy. But drug therapy is not for everyone. And many people can control their cholesterol by changing their lifestyle. Increasing physical activity, maintaining a healthy weight, and quitting smoking are all changes that can help someone lead a heart-healthy lifestyle. And physicians agree that a heart-healthy lifestyle benefits everyone. Regardless of what your risk level is, whether it's high, intermediate, or low risk, everybody should be engaging in a heart-healthy lifestyle. Experts recommend that as the primary method to prevent heart disease. And the way to make sure that you're going to be here tomorrow is to find the time today to take the action to live a heart-healthy life.